Hello, my name is Hans George Campbell, and welcome to a special episode of the Hans Campbell Show. Today I thought I'd show you some of the rarest IBM PC games from my collection. So let's get started. Okay, first we have the um, the collector's edition of World of Warcraft from 2004. This is the original vanilla World of Warcraft from 2004, and this is the collector's edition. This is my own personal copy of it. Um, today, this has a an eBay value. I mean, this is uh, what I've seen this game actually sell for on eBay. Uh, in this condition, like new, but unsealed. It's not shrink wrapped, but it's in like new condition. Uh, this goes for between $300 and $500. That's the current eBay uh, selling price. I mean, what I've seen this actually sell for on eBay. Now, if this was still sealed. If it, if it was still shrink-wrapped, um, this game would easily sell for between $8,000 and $10,000. Yes, you heard me right. I've seen this game actually sell for that kind of money, especially now during uh, World of Warcraft Classic. For some reason, everybody wants the original version, you know, of this game, especially this collector's edition here. I mean, this this thing is highly sought after right now. But anyway, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what's you know inside. Try to you know keep it centered on the camera so that you can see uh, the contents. You know the contents of the box. Well, I'm not worried about this one. This is the, the one I want you to see. Okay, so we've got the the art book. Okay, the art of World of Warcraft. Okay, we got the art of World of Warcraft. I think it's pretty cool. You know, this book, I think it's pretty cool. I've got another copy of this book just laying around loosely, like on my coffee table, because I like looking at these pictures. I think they're very nice. And we have the original um, cloth map with the brass ring. That's the original cloth map, cloth map of Azeroth. I thought that was really cool. And then we have the original World of Warcraft soundtrack. I put it in this jewel case. Yeah. Got the original World of Warcraft soundtrack. And we have the game on one DVD. Okay, it comes on one DVD. And it also comes on... Oh, man. i got to get this out of here. It also comes on four um, CDs. Okay, so yeah, there's uh, CD one and two right there. And then there is CD three and four. Actually, I'm going to put this back in. Okay. Okay. And I also have in here the original. This is still shrink wrapped. I never even opened this. 
the special limited edition World of Warcraft behind the scenes DVD. That's what this is. Behind the scenes um, DVD. Still shrink wrap. I've never even seen that. I mean, watch this. Yeah. Actually, I do have another copy of this that I found in the Goodwill. And it's not sealed. I, I, I think I watched that one. Okay. And then here's the original manual. I'll cover up my my key. Actually, I don't even think you can use it, so I don't worry. I'm not going to worry about that. But anyway, that's the original manual. It's about half inches thick. You know. But yeah, that's the manual. It shows you how to play the game. The original manual. And then we have uh, the product catalog, you know, showing you the different products that Blizzard sold back, you know, back then, including the original uh, Warcraft games. Yeah. Okay, and then we have this stuff here. Um, I think this is talking about, uh, you know, NVIDIA graphics cards. 10% off, 20% off, 30% off on NVIDIA graphics cards. You know, they want you to use NVIDIA to play World of Warcraft. You know, that's what that is. And then this one is, if I can get it out of there, uh, I don't want to mess it up, uh, runs great on Intel Pentium 4. That shows you how old this game is. <laughs> it runs great on Intel Pentium 4 processor. All right, that's nice to know. But yeah, this is my original, um, my, my uh, collector's edition of this game that I bought way back then. That shows you how, I mean, this is proof how long I've been playing World of Warcraft. I've been playing it for 15 years now. But yeah, I just love this game. I just love World of Warcraft. Yeah. Okay, so that is... Uh, World of Warcraft. Okay, so the next game I have to show from my collection is One Unit of Whole Blood. This is the rarest version of the PC game Blood. Um, inside the box, I don't want to open it because it's still new, uh, you get the actual game Blood. And you get the Plasma Pack, which is the first expansion for Blood. And you get Cryptic Passage, which is the next expansion for Blood. And you get the Secrets. It's like a, um, an interactive strategy guide for Blood. So you get all four of these things in this one box. And I got this from, I think it was Comp... Um, I think it was Comp USA, if I remember correctly. I think they're out of business now. But this was one of the games that I think they sold exclusively. And that's one of the reasons why this game is, is so rare, because um, they went out of business soon after they had the, this game here on the shelf. So not many of, of this was sold. You know, Blood was usually sold in this format here, the black box with the red hand print, and you rarely ever got the the expansions. They were hard to come by. Because this game was outlawed in in several countries around the world. You know, they outlawed this game. In fact, I think some of the states in the United States also banned this game. You know, because of the, uh, the violent content and the demonic uh, content of, of this game. You know, but it's a really good first-person shooter game. I really love this game. It's one of my favorite first-person shooter games of all time. It uses the build engine, just like Duke Nukem, 
and uh, Shadow Warrior, you know. And I love those games too, by the way. But yeah, this is uh, the rarest version of Blood. And it's called One Unit Hold Up. Now this game, I've seen this one sell for literally hundreds of dollars on eBay. This too is a very valuable game. Okay. Um, next, we have the rarest version of Doom. Uh, this is the rarest version of Doom. Okay. Front and back of the box. Okay. Um, this is the shareware version of Doom in a retail box. Okay. Now normally the retail, I mean I mean the shareware version of Doom was just given away. You you usually have like you see a box of them, a box of the discs sitting next to the cash register, okay? And it'd be a sign on the front free, take one, you know. You would also get the shareware version of Doom like in um uh, like joysticks and, and things that were sold for the PCs, right? You would get them for free, okay? But some of the stores, um, they wanted uh, ID software to send them, even the shareware version here, in a retail box so that they would have something to display on their shelves. And so uh, ID software... Uh, sent the shareware version of the game in, in these kind of boxes. Not many of these were made. These are very rare. Like I said, this is the rarest version of Doom. Um, recently I checked on eBay under sold listings and this game sold for several hundred dollars. It, it's very rare. Very rare game. Yeah. Very rare. Um, this right here is the second rarest version of Doom. This is the first release of the, the actual commercial version of the game, the retail version of the game that you would have to buy. You know, it came with uh, all three episodes, okay, and this is what the box looks like, okay. Um... I don't want to open it up because the box, this kind of a box is very delicate and I don't want to mess up the flaps. But it comes with the manual and I think it's like four or five discs in the box, you know. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to show you the, the box, you know. Uh, this game, I also checked on eBay recently. There was a few copies that sold for a little over $200 and there was a few that sold for around $325. So yeah, this too is a very rare version of Doom and is highly sought after. Oh, and the ones that sold, the box was in was not in this nice a condition. And yet they still sold for that much money. So I know this one here is probably worth closer to like around three fifty, four hundred bucks because of the condition of this box. It's 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 in very nice condition. You know. Okay. The next game that I want to show is um, Starflight. Um, this game here took over 15 years to produce. Yes, you heard me right. It took 15 years to produce this game. Okay. This is one of the games that I'm going to show running on my Commodore 286 Bridgeboard. So stay tuned for that series of videos. But this is one of the games I plan on showing on my Bridgeboard, 286 Bridgeboard series. That's from uh, this is the back of the the case or the um, the packaging. And that's the front. I just love the front of this. I just love the front of this uh, this packaging. Okay, so we've got the two discs two uh, Starflight discs. And then we've got the user's guide. Okay, the user's guide. And 
there's the code wheel. You've got to have that, that code wheel. Yeah, it's like the copy protection for the game, but you got to have that, you know, the code wheel. Okay. Now I have another copy of this in mint condition. I think it's still sealed even. But this is the one here that I that I used to play because I love playing this game. It's my favorite um, science fiction role playing adventure game. It's really good. Okay, next we have the Starflight uh, Manual. Okay, Starflight Manual. Yeah, this is a really detailed, highly drawn out science fiction role playing adventure game. If you like a nice, long role playing adventure game that's interesting to play, then yeah, you want to play Starflight. Okay, this is the clue book, Project Flying Dutchman. Th this doesn't come with the game. You have to usually purchase this separate. But it's the clue book, you know, for this game. Yeah, that's the clue book. And then this is the rarest part of this game. Usually if you can find Starflight, it will not come with this star chart. But that is the rarest part of this game, is the actual Starflight star map. Yeah, that's the rarest part of this, uh, the rarest piece of this, uh, this game, is the star, the star chart. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's put this... Yeah, I thought I'd show this game. It's one of my favorite games. I mean, every time I play this game, it just brings back so many, you know, memories. So many memories from back then. The early years of, you know, the IBM PC and compatibles, you know. This was a very popular game back then. Alrighty, so next we've got... Bring these closer to my chair. Okay. Had to bring those closer to my chair. Alright, next we've got um, the Magic Candle. Another rare uh, role-playing adventure game for the PC. The Magic Candle. Now, this was shrink-wrapped, but I had to remove the shrink wrap because... I wanted to see the inside of the box contents. I wanted to see what this game looked like. You know, so I removed the shrink wrap. But it is brand new. Brand new condition. But this is a really interesting game. It, it's a lot like... Um, it's a lot like the Ultima series. But instead of being able to play up to four characters, I think in this one you can play up to six characters. You know, uh, but yeah. This is a rare role-playing adventure game. For the PC. Let me see if I can get this out. I don't want to mess up the box. Oh, come on. I don't want to mess up the box. This one, you can tell is brand new because it's real tight. The box is real tight. I don't want to mess up the box. Okay. So, these are the discs. Uh, there's three discs. Three discs. There's the the program disk, okay, and there's the the data disk, and then there's the graphics disk, right there. But yeah, I'm actually looking forward to play this game. I, I've never played this game before. I'm looking forward to playing it. I found out about it by accident when I was looking for PC software on eBay. And I happened upon 
this game, and I couldn't believe how much it sold for. I mean, it sold for hundreds of dollars. I think, oh my god. You know, some of these games are valuable. Okay, there's the, I guess is the warranty card right there. Technical support and warranty. It's never been sent in, of course, because this game's brand new. Um, and then we have, let's see, the, I guess it's the quick start booklet, quick start booklet. You know, it's only like about, I don't know, four pages or whatever. That's a quick start book, pamphlet. Okay. And then the actual manual. Now, I don't like the way they did the manual. It looks like they just basically photocopied. It looks like it's just standard, like, copy paper. And then they folded it in half and stapled it. That's what it looks like. So I, I'm not really particularly happy with this manual. I mean, I think, you know, they could have done a much nicer job on this manual. Um, but, yeah, there's the manual with the quick start guide and all that. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not too impressed with this manual. The game itself might be like Ultima, okay, but I don't think the the manual is, you know. But yeah, this is the original Magic Candle. Yeah, this is the original Magic Candle. This had to show this game. Okay. There's also a Magic Candle 2... Uh, Two and a Magic Candle three, like Volume One, Volume Two, and Volume Three, and this is the first one. Hard drive required. So apparently you got to install this game on the hard drive uh, to play it. But yeah, but there's Magic Candle. Okay. Um. Okay. Okay. Oh, Next, we've got. Ultima 7, Part 2, um, Serpent Isle, okay, and there's the back of the box. Yeah, the Ultima series is getting hard to find now. Any of the Ultima series is getting um, hard to find. Okay, it comes on, I believe, seven discs comes on seven discs. I can't believe Seven discs. I mean, look at that. Seven discs. Yeah, well, make sure you see all the discs, because a lot of people have, have never seen these discs. So, I thought I'd show them in this video. You know. Seven discs. That's how big this game is. And these are high density discs, too. Seven high density discs. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking forward to playing this game, too. All the way through. I've never played Ultima 7, so I'm looking forward to playing this game. Yeah, I'm looking forward to playing it. Okay, so there's that. Okay, and next we have the Stop Read Me First. Apparently you've got to um, make a bootable floppy disk in order to be able to boot this game up on your computer. So, yeah, those are important instructions. And then we have, uh, let's see, the install -a guide, Ultima 7 Part 2 Serpent Owl, the install -a guide. Um, yeah, install -a guide. 
Okay. And we have the quick reference um, guide. Quick reference guide. Okay, it's a fold out. The quick quick reference guide. So yeah. And then we got um, let me see We got the actual manual. Now you notice how in the newer versions, I mean the newer Ultimas, the manuals and stuff is not as good as in the older Ultimas. They're just not as good. They're not done on that antique-like paper, and the artwork is not as good, you know. Um, and, and it's still an Ultima game, but you can tell that uh, these these newer Ultima games they're not as nice as the original series. You know, I think the original series is a lot better. Yeah. And this here is the clue book. It doesn't come with the game. You have to usually usually have to buy this separate. But I think on this one. Some of them did come with the, the clue book. They included the clue book. But I think on this one I had to buy this uh, separate. But this is the clue book. Ultima 7 Part 2 Serpent Isle Clue Book. Balancing the scales. Yeah, the clue book looks like it has better artwork than the original manual. And it looks like it's done on an old style paper, too. I mean, I think the clue book actually should have been the manual if they included it with the game because it's it's very nice it's actually pretty nice you know anyway that's the clue book and then we have the disc exchange form okay that's the disc exchange form and last but not least see, even the map the cloth map that is included is not as nice as the one in the older games the ones in the older games, they were a lot nicer. I mean, they were made out of a heavier cloth material. material. Uh, the print was darker and better, higher contrast. I mean, it was just better. And even this gold stuff around here was a lot nicer quality, I mean, better quality, you know. But at least you do, you still get a cloth map, so I guess that's okay. this in there, that in there, okay. Okay, so there's that. Okay, and next we have um, the rarest version of Night Hunter. Um, the IBM PC version of Night Hunter. I also have this game in new condition for the Atari ST and the Amiga computers. But this is the rarest version, the IBM version of 900. This is a very addictive game. I will warn you of that. What it's about is you play Dracula, Count Dracula, and you wake up at nighttime. And you have to find, in, in each level, you have to find eight items before sunrise in order to exit that, that level and go on to the next level. you got to find eight items. And while you're looking for these eight items, you've got people walking around that's, that's trying to stab you with a wooden stake. You've got hunters that can shoot wooden arrows at you. You've got witches flying around on brooms that can zap you with magic, apparently... Dracula doesn't like magic. And you also have Van Helsing walking around in the, in the higher levels. Now, you just got to avoid him because if he touches you, you're dead. You know, he cannot touch you at all. So you just have to avoid him. Okay. Um, now, as Dracula, 
you have a health bar that goes down and you have a energy bar that goes down. I think it's an energy bar or something like that. Okay, so you have to once in a while grab one of the, the people and you have to drink their blood. You have to get your you keep your blood supply up or else you'll die. And you can turn it into a bat, so you can actually fly around to you know in, in the different areas of each level. And you can turn it into a like a werewolf form. And you can grab people or you can punch people. You know, it's good for like melee attacks and stuff like that. So yeah, it's a really cool game, very addictive. Uh, anyway, let's open it up and see what's inside. Okay. We've got four, yes, count them, four discs. Um, CGA, EGA, VGA, and Tandy. All right. And we have just a really simple uh, manual here. Okay. Loading instructions. And I think it talks about, you know, the object of the game. And But, but yeah, this is a really... Really cool game. I just love this game. I mean, I must love it if I have it for the Amiga, Atari ST, and PC. I must really love this game. But anyway, this is the, what, technical support right here? Technical support. And then the registration card. Yeah, but not many of these were sold here in the United States. It's actually rare in the United States, this game this NTSC version. This game was more popular uh, over in Europe, the PAL version of the game. But this this NTSC version, uh, C, NTSC, okay, uh, this is the rarest version of this game. The NTSC version of Night Hunter for the IBM PC. All righty. Now, I want to talk about the uh, the this game here. Okay, you'll notice that it's in two different type of boxes. The same game. Uh, this game came out in what is known as the transitional period, where the games were transitioned from big box to the standard size box that we know today. Okay. Uh, any of the games that came out, the big box games that came out during the transitional period, a lot of these games are now very hard to find and they're worth hundreds of dollars each. Okay. This one here um, is Arcanum. It's one of my favorite uh, role-playing adventure games. It's by Sierra. And that's what the, the front of the box looks like. And the back of the, the box. Okay, and let's open her up, see what's inside. Yeah, this big box version is the rarest of these two versions. The big box version. Okay, so we got that. And, okay, we got the... I think this is, yes, yeah, it's, it's on two CDs. So that should give you an idea of how old this game is. It's on two CDs. You know. Um, I think I used to run this on my uh, Pentium 3, my 600 megahertz Pentium 3 legacy PC that I had that I built way back in 2000, you know, 19 years ago. Anyway, that's the first disc. That's the, the first disc. And then that's um, the second disc, you know, right there. But yeah, this is a cool game. And then here's the, it's the map, for, you know, it's the map, you know. And the, the quick keys, you know, your quick keys. And then we got the manual. It's a pretty nice manual. It's about a half inch thick. I mean, when was the last time you went? You were able to go into a store and buy software like this. I mean, this is a thing of the past. You can't you can't get software like this anymore. You know, you just can't get stuff like this anymore. Software. I mean, being able to go into a store 
and just buy software like this complete with a manual and the discs and all that. It's a thing of the past. And it will never come back. That's just the way it is. It's, this will never come back. And that's the reason why, you know, a lot of you guys, you collect hardware. The vintage computer hardware. To me, the vintage computer hardware is a dime a dozen. I, I find them all the time very easily. It's the software to me that's rare. The software to me is what's rare. And I think it's more valuable than the hardware that, that it runs on. I think the software is actually more valuable. Come on. Okay. So we got um, this, I think it's an advertisement for another one of their games. Empire Earth. And then the business reply mail card, you know. Okay. Anyway, that's Arcanum, the big box version. Okay. And like I said, the big box version, a lot of times on, on the transitional period software, is actually more valuable than the standard box version, the smaller box version. Okay, so there's that. And this is the standard size uh, box version. Uh, it's about the size of a DVD case, only it's about an inch thick. In fact, a lot of PC games do come in DVD cases, and I wish all of them did. You know, I, I like the, the DVD cases better than these flimsy, you know, lightweight cardboard cardboard boxes, you know. But anyway, that's the small box version, you know, standard box version. Okay. And I need to get me a knife. I use a knife for opening these flaps. You know, there's a dull part of the blade right here. And you just... Slip it in like that, right? Put your thumb over and you lift up. And see, it, it'll allow you to open those flaps without damaging them or creasing them or breaking them. See? The flap is still nice. Perfect. Okay. Anyway. Okay. This is the... The map, I mean, look how cute that is. A little small map. And then there's the quick keys. It's like a, I don't know, 3 by 5 card size, whatever. <laughs> it's so cute, you know. And uh, the two CDs, like what's in the big box, the two CDs. And the manual, I mean, look how cute that manual is. A really small manual. You know, I mean, just look at that. <laughs> How small that is. I mean, look at that. How small that manual is. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, I thought I'd, I'd tell you about the transitional period. You know, the big box software that came out during the transitional period. A lot of those programs are actually worth a lot of money now. Because not many of those were made. They, the, the, the games, especially, uh, most of them were sold or they were transitioned into uh, this size box here. You know, the standard size box that we know of today. Yeah. Anyway, um, this concludes. The, uh, my rare PC games, you know, from my software collection. Uh, my name is Hans George Campbell, and until next time.